input value input and we will start with number one on the list injection so um, let's uh, actually split that into uh, two and down here i'm going to run the server as i'm going to run the server And now um, I have a JSON file, which I'm going to add <coughs> a new journal entry, right? So a journal entry, <coughs> sorry, has a time, a user and a content. And I'm going to um, issue an HTTP command. I'm using the command line client because I'm old. Uh, I live in the command line, what can I say? Um, and then I'm getting back the idea of, of the this, um, Um, journal entry, and if I'm going to localhost uh, 8080 slash uh, last, this is an endpoint with the last entry. This is my first entry by Joe. Now let's do it again, but this time with entry number two. And now we see that uh, something bad happened to the server and also, uh, when you go here, uh, we found out no entries. My entries were deleted. And when we, um, sorry. When we look at uh, add to, we see that uh, it has what is known as an SQL injection. Right, so there is this sign, and then we say drop table uh, and ending a comma. So let's go to our database. And we see that our database has several uh, SQL schemas. I'm using the new uh, Go Embed, which came out in Go 116. It is really awesome. So you can put your SQL files here uh, in a, in a, in a file with syntax editing and everything. And then I go will just embed it in the executable. Uh, and then when I'm looking, when I'm doing an add, I'm doing this, which is using sprintf to construct an SQL query. And I'm telling you, I've been consulting with several companies, uh, with a lot of companies actually throughout um, uh, the last 10 years. You'd be surprised how many times I still see that. Everybody knows that you shouldn't do that. You shouldn't construct manually the SQL queries to your server, but people are still doing that. So uh, what, what can we do? We can use database SQL, right? So database SQL, that's the library that provides our database access. And we are, instead of doing the query yourself, it gives you the ability to construct a query with placeholder, either names or question marks for a play, for positional. So you can pass parameter I by, either by name or by position. And then um, you will be um, avoiding this SQL injection. So don't use the sprintf, use database SQL. Again, this is a very known lesson, but it's surprisingly still out there. And sometimes people say, you know what, I can't manage to get it right exactly with database SQL. I just do a sprint F, what can be, what can, what, what can, what can go wrong? And things will go wrong. And there is a question about the repo, where the code is. Um, so I will post the repo on the chat in a bit. Um, so you can have a look at the, at the code yourself. Okay, so database SQL. Uh, just use it. It's there for you. The second one is insecure deserialization. So we, we, when we work with servers, right, we get some data. This data initially comes as a sequence of bytes, and we need to convert it back to a data in our or to a type in our language. In this case, Go. So this is deserialization. In Go, we call it unmarshalling as well. And the thing is that. I don't think there's any serialization format that is totally secure. So this is XML. This is known as a billion laughs, laughs attack. And if you take this 
XML, and this is the whole XML that you see now on the slide. This is going to um, expand to about three gigabytes of memory. In some languages, in some uh, XML parsers are vulnerable to that. The one in the standard library actually is not. So good, I tried it out, you know, um, just to check. But uh, again, someone might find another um, way of attacking them, right? And there's also uh, zip bombs and uh, YAML bombs and, and many other variants of, on the same thing. Uh, it can be even simpler than that. There was a case where Java, when you gave it this exact floating point number, it would hang. Either if you put it verbatim inside the Java source code, the compiler will hang, or if you if you call pass float on this uh, exact string, Java will hang. It will enter um, and that's it. And I remember this one specifically because I worked at the, at the time at the company, we had the um, Java servers and I was reading about it in the morning and I, I told one of the, I was doing, you know, water cooler conversation with one of the ops team and I told him about it. He said, how oh, funny. And then he came to me at lunch and said, you know what? Thank you very, very much. And I said, why? He said, because uh, we started seeing our web server getting stuck one after the other. Someone was sending this exact value in the HTTP headers, the, the language header, which has a floating point number, and the server was getting stuck when it tries to pass that. So even uh, when you have something which looks really simple and you're doing your own serialization, uh, people might find vulnerabilities in that. So, uh, you need to check what you're doing. And we are working with JSON in our code, right? So in the HTTP server, when we, uh, when we take some data for the ad handler, right? We, we use a JSON new decoder and we decode the data into a JSON object. And last time I checked, there was no, I don't think there were any known security vulnerabilities on JSON passing in Go. But, you know, there are smart people out there. Someone might find it. But one thing that for sure you can do is limit the amount of data that you are reading, right? Because someone can say, okay, I'm sending you a JSON. I'll start the curly braces, open uh, quotes, and then send you the letter A for about uh, six or seven gigabytes. And then your memory explodes. And for that, uh, the standard library has an IO limit reader. The IO limit reader is really nice. It helps you by wrapping another reader and limiting the amount of bytes that you read from it. And I recommend that every time that you ingest data from the outside, put some kind of a limit on how much data you're going to get in. Uh, 